look. It's new glasses day. I love them. Um, I know I don't really wear um, my glasses for my videos. Wait, there you are. Um, I know I don't really wear my glasses for my videos, but I just got these and I love them, so I'm wearing them. Um, they are a little bit more fun than my old glasses, a little bit less serious, a little bit less uh, tea tree than my very black square ones, but I love them. Um, but I bet you are not loving this time of year. Smooth transition from glasses to revision there. Smooth transition. Um, yeah, this time of year, it's all starting to get a bit stressful. It's all starting to get a little bit real, isn't it? Um, and now is the time that you should be thinking about properly, properly starting your revision. Now, in my last video, which was, oh, just after Christmas holidays, um, I talked about getting everything ready. So, like, printing off all the specifications, taking time to find those, um, getting all the past papers that you can, making your flashcards, getting stuff sorted out. So that when we get to now, when we get to the time that I want you to properly start a vision, everything is already there, everything is already sorted, you've got your pens, your pencil cases, you've got the paper and the files of stuff already sorted and waiting for you so that you don't have to waste time now trying to find this paper or trying to write those flashcards because you've done it already. Now if you haven't quite done it already, you've still got a little bit of time, but I would like you to get a little bit of a hurry on with getting sorted so that we can properly start. And now a timetable, or at very least some form of planning, is going to be absolutely essential. There are loads of different ways you can do this. You can go through the contents pages of your revision guides and write dates on there next. You can go crazy with post-it notes, stick little timetable post-it notes, I love these, these are so cute, and write down what you're going to study in the front of your revision guide. You can do those ones for any subject, or for science, that's not focusing, I've made one for you which you can just go and get off my website. The reason it is now so important to think about timetable or if not a full timetable the very very least some form of plan is that we don't want to be skipping stuff out. We don't want to get to June and realise that you've skipped a whole subject or a whole chapter in like either English you've like missed out one of the books or something that you have to learn or in maths you've forgotten to do statistics so at the very least checklist or some kind of plan where we can make sure everything gets covered as a minimum and this is the very very bare minimum i want you to be thinking about doing an hour per subject per week and i want that hour to be breaking down in two chunks so look 25 minutes on a monday and 25 minutes on a sunday that's it and but that's that's the minimum for subjects um, for subjects like English, maths, you know, those ones you have to have to get the grade in, you're going to want to do a bit more, maybe four 25 minute blocks in a week for stuff where you want um, to go and do A level stuff for you, subjects you know you really have to do well in, so you can get on the course that you want to get on next year, we need to start thinking about a few more blocks in as well. But as a very, very minimum, I want you to be thinking about an hour per subject per week. And you can't do kind of like not do any geography for a month and they do loads and loads of geography because that's not how your brain works, that's not how stuff sinks in. It needs time to sink in. So doing an hour one week and an hour next week is going to be much better than trying to do four hours all at once. Slow and steady is the key with revision. And I know the end of exams, the start of exams, summer feels like a really, really long way away, but it's kind of not. Um, your teachers are going to finish teaching very, very soon. There's only, after half term, there's only five, six, maybe seven weeks until Easter. Um, teaching is definitely going to finish by Easter. You'll come back, it'll be full on, full on exam preparation at school. And then there'll be kind of this study leave, not study leave thing going on where you might be in school and you might not be in school. Before you know it, the exams are going to be here before you know it the exams are going to be here there's not really a lot else I can say to that so let's try and get as sorted as we can so that when they do get here it's not such a shock and spreading things out slow and steady is going to be a fantastic way to do this when you're studying like I said I want it to be in short 25 minute blocks um I don't want like maths 
followed by maths, followed by math. That's not really the way that it's going to work. So not really your brain will the way that your brain takes in information. I know in school you might have like hour long lessons, you might have double lessons which are an hour and 40 minutes, hour and 50 minutes maybe. Um, but your brain doesn't like working in long chunks like that. So you do you kind of like art and then maths and then English. Three subjects that have very, very different skills but will work quite well next to each other because the fact that they contain different skills. So even just by switching subject, your brain feels like it's taking a break. Even if you're switching from a hardcore subject, maths, to another hardcore subject, English, your brain still appreciates the change. It still feels like it's taking a break and it will work better than just doing English, 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 or maths, 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 maths. In between switching subjects, take a break. Now, I'm not talking about studying for 25 minutes and then taking a two hour break. I'm talking about studying for 25 minutes and taking a five minute break. And I really need to be active when you're taking this break. So get up out of your chair, move away from your desk, Go downstairs, make a cup of tea, make someone else a cup of tea, everyone appreciates being made a cup of tea. Um, go to the toilet, run up and down the stairs five times, do something. Don't just sit on your desk looking at your phone because that's not a real break. Um, if you want to like spend 25 minutes looking at your phone, fine, that's fine. Just make sure it's timetabled in and that you're not skipping a session of religious studies revision because you're looking at your phone. So it is important to schedule in to your plan, to your post-it note, to your beautiful large revision timetable that you've gone crazy with the glitter glue on, time to look after yourself. So time for dinner, really important to start eating properly. Um, time uh, for watching TV, time for talking with your friends, time for doing exercise. These things are still really, really important, even though you've got exams coming, um, going on and I know that, that feels really, really overwhelming. It's still important to take time to look after you. So I, um, I see my role in all of this is trying to make your life as easy as possible. That's why I've made the timetable that you can just go and download for free from my website for you. I've made the flashcards for you so you don't have to waste time doing that. I've done the science and math specifications for you so that you don't have to waste time doing that because I've done it all for you and I've linked it through to a load of videos. I am here to help you as much as I can and Prim is here to annoy me while I do that. So if there's anything you guys can think of that I could do extra to help you out, um, just let me know.